Loads of stuff happening with The Last of Us 2 right now. Stuff breaking about The Last of Us 2 remaster, which I have to assume will be like The Last of Us Part 1 that we got last year, where it all gets overhauled. But a lot of the conversation around that was like, they're just bringing it in line with Last of Us 2. Calm down, everyone. Don't worry about it. It's just a quality of life improvement. And I guess there's that argument, I guess. But at the same time... um, this Last of Us 2 remaster comes from a Naughty Dog artist, an outsource artist, uh, listing it on their LinkedIn CV, um, and also a composer, Gustavo Santalasha, mentioning it a good couple of months ago that he was doing work for a new version of the game, which seems to be the, whatever the hell this remake thing is. Thoughts on bringing a game back from 2020? It's, it's one of those where it's a no-brainer for it to be a remaster. It'd be t- the, 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 the resources to expend in fully remaking that game would be redonkulous. I do remember <laughs> the other year that people were kind of concerned over the... Because the, I think the rumor initially was was that they might be I know the word remake has been mm. used. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. I'm I would be curious about the um the, the price at entry point. <laughs> that's because yeah, that's the thing. I don't think it's fair to charge for that level of an upgrade because I don't see how I think people want they want the performance mode, right? They want they want the different graphical options there. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, I'm, I'm, well, yeah. Well, the thing is that we, yeah, that distinction of remaster, remake, obviously over the years, you can point to things like the Shadow of the Colossus, actual remake from the ground up, remake, you can argue. I mean, it pretty much is. Last of Us Part 1 is a remake. Like, a lot of those assets were overhauled, and um, some of the general physics and the gameplay and stuff tightened up, etc. For Last of Us Part 2's version, um, remaster is mentioned here, but The Last of Us 2, if you play the PS4 version on PS5, that unlocks the frame rate and frees a whole bunch of stuff up anyway. So you've kind of got a de facto remaster anyway. So they they need to do something to it. It's going to be the ray tracing, isn't it? It makes me think of like, you know, when Rockstar did the GTA 5 upgrade, which, mm. if, you know, if you've never played GTA 5 before, like it's a great time. Is yeah, it, like yeah. the, what they did there, you can get, you know, performance, performance ray tracing or, you know, ray tracing on, in GTA Online and GTA single player. For, for what it is, it's actually a really good, like, mm. upgrade. The price point was just thoroughly bizarre. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, it's going to come down to whether or not people are happy with their current version of The Last of Us. I think overall, if you're looking at this from a business perspective, you want everything to be on parity. Um, well, the thing is, like, there's all the stuff going on in the wider sort of Sony sphere with Jim Ryan stepping down, or he's going to be stepping down next year. I have to imagine the amount of ideas, project ideas, wider marketing ideas that were greenlit by him, because um, they all came in quick succession, like the idea of the PlayStation Studio stuff, remastering slash remaking all these, uh, you know, the games from the last few Yes, we know there's a Horizon Zero Dawn remake coming. Oh, oh what the same, God, same yeah. weird blur of things. Is it a remaster, a remake? How much work's being done on that? But it's coming alongside um, the Horizon TV show. So it's like you can see the overall push for big brand thing has the game tie-in, um, like Last of Us Part 1 did with the Last of Us TV show. And so it's one of those things where I don't know, because Jim Ryan is now stepping back or stepping down, how much does that wider attempt to mine more money out of these properties, does that go away? Or is he just set a new standard? Is it where we're going to get something every sort of two or three years because there is a graphical benchmark or something. Oh God, I think I think it's one of those where in my brain, I think you would, I don't think you needed to remake The Last of Us Part 1. No. I don't think you'd necessarily need to remaster The Last of Us Part 2. However, because you have remade Part 1, it makes sense for the sequel to be on a similar footing with yes. that game. As for like longer term, like strategic implications of this, I'd be relieved if PlayStation shifted away from this, like in going back and, and revisiting stuff. Although I would, you know, I, I think a, a Horizon remake is egregious. I think that's like yeah. absolutely <laughs> ridiculous given what that game came out in 2017. 2017. So yeah, no, that is just pure shocking. People want new experiences. They want mm. new games. Those resources that you're putting into, and the rumor has been a full remake, right? Well, that's the thing. It's, yeah. it's, it occupies the same space as The yeah. Last of Us one. It's, it's whatever these things are. Because, yeah. like, a few years ago, we had them attempt. It was in 2020. They tried the director's cut versions of these games, which were some frame rate editions, but mostly glorified DLC. And then now we're getting whatever the part one, whatever you want to call last year's Last of Us thing, um, quasi. It's more, more of a remake than a remaster, if we're thinking of just resolutions and frame rates. And then whatever that process is, assumedly, will be applied to Horizon Stuff like that. <laughs> this is weird because Last of Us Part 2 being from 2020 is Last of Us Part 1 mostly looks the same as that. It was about upgrading 2013's assets to get more in line with that. So I don't know what you can do with Last of Us Part 2. It already looks gorgeous anyway. Yeah, I think I think it just comes down to, you know, I, them, you want, I understand it. I understand it because remaking Part 1 and having Part 2, maybe, you know, it's on the same level or anything. You kind of want to make sure it's the true next gen experience yeah. or whatever, or the current gen experience. Mm-hmm. The thing in my brain is like, I really hope that the resources being expended on these projects aren't taking away from 
new experiences that mm. we're all after. You know, we talked about like generational identity on different consoles and stuff. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, okay, The Last of Us is such a PS3, PS4 type thing now. Oh, yeah. Like, Naughty Dog should be looking at the next thing. And obviously, you know, we'll get into it later on about mm -hmm. the Last of Us project that is seemingly no longer happening. But yep. it's a case of, you know, people want fresher experiences. And I get like wanting to have your, your whole thing being in parity or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think it's kind of redundant. We should, we should be comfortable with letting games age and revisiting those games. Like in my brain, I was talking to my mates the other day about the, the Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake, which I think has been r rumored. Or yeah, we're in, we're in rumored leak territory like, for that. Again, you can play that game on PlayStation 5 right now. And it holds up really well, mm -hmm. graphically, gameplay wise, what have you. Um, but I know that some people will be like, oh, I'd be down for a remake of Black Flag. But in my brain, I'm like, well, why not just do a sequel, do something new with that premise? It just comes ac across as a bit safe and adventurous. That's the thing. I, I'm really curious. I need to talk to more game devs about this, but I'm curious. Like, in the likes of Horizon, you make Forbidden West, you upgrade the likes of the Aloy, char Aloy character model, and you change all these different assets in regards to the environment and the water and the physics, some of the physics models and things like that, and some of the um, enemy designs and everything. It's almost like a why not thing, potentially, on if you're just doing some, um, you know, a business maneuver of, well, why not put that stuff back into the original? How much carries back over? Um, is that an easy thing to do? And can we then charge 70 pounds for it or whatever? And you can kind of see the potential business reality of that. Um, but it's, it's, it is kind of case by case. And how much are you going in and changing the guts of something? It's interesting as well, because I imagine that they're banking on a lot of people coming into these remakes slash remasters as being first time, like mm. it's their entry point into these games, maybe. I'm curious to see how that, that affects their perception of the sequels if they've been graphically upgraded and have gameplay in a, really like point. you know stuff retroactively changed how does that change their perception of the sequel do they mm -hmm. think that okay well this isn't as big a step up now because i've just played something that has had the bones of that mm. retroactively inserted it's it's just it, it's i'm it's not a, there the, for it there's yeah. a weird thing as well because it I, I don't, I'm, I like, I obviously there's the, the big leap between generations, the big leap between consoles, and we grew up with some of the biggest leaps between console generations. But at the same time, having um, like the Spider-Man collection, Spidey, Miles Morales, and Spidey 2, like obviously Spidey 2 is a big leap up, but for The Last of Us, part one, last year's version, the upgraded version, that sits quite nicely next to a part two, and you can sort of play them all in one go or something, and it all sits nicely together in a way that um, you can argue, maybe playing Metal Gear Solid 1 and then going through PS2, um, the PS3, and then finally finish on Metal Gear Solid 4, there's a huge breadth and quality there, graphical quality, um, that I personally don't care about. I love all those versions, but I wonder, I wonder what people respond to and whether people want that, like, mm -hmm. remastered collection version of something. Like, when you get a box set and everything's 4K Blu-ray or whatever, yeah. and it's just there all in one package. It's interesting, the thought processes and decisions that are going into this. I agree with you. I'd be mm. very interested to interrogate what the metho methodology is here. Filthy because casuals. Because it, it seems as if, you know, in the case of, like, The Last of Us, you know, part two remaster, remake, whatever you want to call <laughs> like, again, that feels to me like you, you, you're doing that out of obligation now because you remade part one and there are mm -hmm. certain things that you did in part one that you think, okay, well, part two is the sequel. It should be just as good mm -hmm. as that and then have all the different bells and whistles on top of it. It's the same with like um, Spider-Man where they changed, you know, the voice, the, the facial model for Peter Parker mm -hmm. and then they end up, ended up remastering that for Spider-Man Miles Morales because obviously the PlayStation 5 was coming out as well with like mm -hmm. a different face, but it still looked good. So yeah, it's weird. I think it, <laughs> the more we do this and the more we blur the lines between letting games go and letting them have their moment in history mm. and applying those lessons to a fresh experience. I, I love, one of my favorite things to do is go back to an old game. I love, and some of that comes from just knowing the history of gaming. Like I pick up an old N64 cartridge. I can still be blown away um, playing something in, like when I played Mario 64 for the first time when I was 30, um, like a few years ago, I was still like, oh my God, this would have been incredible in 1996. This is still incredible for, 19, like for the late 90s and everything. I don't have any problem having that mindset, but I'm curious like um because there's so much about gaming gets wrapped up in the tech conversation about just saying that well you don't want to go back to old tech so let's just make sure everything keeps up um versus being okay with old games like i love old games like it's you know i'd like play the the atari 50 collection and things like that so um yeah i think that's one of the things where the market's trying to influence or trying to say like how much can we charge you again for this new lick of pain the, the issue for me it's like it's about availability isn't mm. it like i think people would maybe care less about getting the shiny new thing if they were able to just access the older games mm. on on their on their different console libraries mm -hmm. um it's there's no there's no easy solution to this i think again it just comes down to the fact that we hope that these remasters and in looking to the past 
your studios aren't neglecting their resources to go to the, you know, because we're already waiting so long for fresh experiences now. Yeah. Game dev times are spiraling, you know, costs are spiraling. Looking at these, revisiting these older things isn't as much of a time and resource sink 